uh, keep uh, talking about um, uh, group by and, and other other uh, aspects of querying uh, data. Uh, in particular, we like to look at how um, um, how we can uh, group a data where you have fields that might have uh, values that repeat over and over, right? And we would like to collect them and treat them uh, as a single entity, right? So let's uh, let's take and, and we'll see some some of the uh, pros and cons of what can be done and some of the limitations and how to uh, overcome uh, those uh, limitations. Okay. Uh, so in um, uh, SQL allows you to uh, when when you have uh, fields that have many re uh, repeating values, right, to treat them as if they were or uh, all um, uh, part of the same uh, subset, right? So you, you might have a really, really long collection uh, of records, but within the, that collection, you can group them uh, by date, you might group them by, uh, by price, you, can, you might group things by gender, uh, you, you, uh, you might group them by year, right? So depending on, uh, uh, depending on, 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 on various fields, you can group them by, uh, by these, by these uh, different columns. Uh, and the, 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 way, the way it works is that uh, we can uh, give it a, a, an additional um, clause called the group by clause and then give it a, either one column name or multiple column names, right? And what we'll do is that it will iterate over the entire uh, collection and then when it finds uh, the same values for that, for that column name, it will, it will consider, says, ooh, here's, here's one on the, that, that belongs to the same classification right, by, that, uh, by that column name. Uh, now, what happens here is that uh, it, although, just say you have uh, you know millions of records out of which you know a couple, a couple thousand uh, can be grouped by say a year, right? Uh, that fall in the same year, uh, then all those thousand records right, are going to be you know cl um, collapsed into one single uh, record. Right? The individual values are lost. Okay, uh, so so once that aggregation happens, once we, we collapse. Those thousand records into one single entity. Uh, there's there's no way for us to ask anything about the original thousand records. Right? You can only ask general, general generalities. Right? You can't ask anything specific about any one record. You can ask, uh, you know, if, if you have a thousand of these records and some values are numbers, some columns might be numbers. Uh, then you might ask things such as, as uh, you know, generalities such as, well, which one was the biggest number? Which one's the smallest number? What's the average of all those numbers? Yes, but you can't ask anything about a particular uh, record because it's gone, right? It's been collapsed into one single value. Make sense? Right. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we we can only ask things that uh, ask about aggregations of the other columns, right? Yeah, so so we're going to be uh, grouping by a particular column. Uh, obviously, we'll know what that value is. The, the various values are grouped by year 2000. Th these are all these are the thousand records where the year was 2000, and here's here's uh, the 2000 records that where the year was 2001, and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, and so those values will obviously survive the grouping, right? Because we know what the value was that was used to group. So so that can be used. So, so whatever value it is that was grouped by. That is, is uh, survives the grouping, right? so we could ask what the value was, the, the year, for that grouping. Right? So any any columns that are listed in the group by survive uh, that, that that you can reference them in the select clause. Right? But our, all the other columns are gone. Right? The only thing that you could do is apply some aggregation aggregation uh, um, uh, for that for those other columns right? that were not the grouping the group. Uh, the group column. Make sense? Okay. Another thing you can't do is that in the where clause, uh, we can only uh, use the, um, the uh, uh, predicates uh, that apply to the field uh, that we're grouping by. Okay. Uh, you can't, for instance, uh, use in the where clause operations that deal with any of the other fields. Because again, the, uh, the, by the time we get to the where clause, right, the grouping has already occurred. Right? We already lost the values of the other fields. Right? They have already been collapsed into one single line. Right? So we can't ask anything about you know, greater than right, or equal to uh, about any of those particular values, right? because they're gone. They've already been collapsed. Right? They've been already aggregated. So uh, I'd like to uh, explore that limitation 
and how we can circumvent those limitations. Right? So let's take a look at those. Let's look at a couple examples. Uh, so here's a, 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 a table uh, of um, orders. And we have a, a, that uh, we have uh, different order dates. We have uh, order prices. Uh, it looks like in the order prices, we don't have any prices uh, that are um, uh, that can be uh, grouped. Right? It looks like they're all different values. Um, we have customers. It looks like the customer does repeat a couple of times. We see that Alice has purchased three uh, three items, and Charlie has two orders, and Bob has one. So what one legitimate question would be, well, group these by, by customer, right? And, and these will be grouped into three distinct um, uh, uh, groups, right? Where the first group will be the Alice group, the Charlie group, and the Bob group, right? But once we have grouped it, we, can't, we won't be able to retrieve the original values for 1,000, 700, or 300 for the group Alice. Same thing for Charlie, the 1,600 and 100 will be gone. I mean, we, we won't be able to operate on them and say and ask about, well, give me those orders that are greater than or less than or equal to. Okay? There's a group. There's, 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 those values are gone. We can't compare them. Right? We can ask generalities. We can say, well, what was the average order price for Alice? So it'll calculate the average uh, order price or the max price or the minimum or whatever. Whatever we ask or the sum, the total. We can ask the total, right? Uh, but not we can't we can't compare anything individual about those values. So, uh, so over here, uh, we are grouping by customer. So there's three three groups: Alice, Charlie, and Bob. And uh, and and since since a customer is the field by which we group, that value is available to us, right? Because that's how we group grouping. It. So it makes total sense to include it in the select statement, right? To return the value of the of the group. Uh, uh, the other fields, the, the dates, uh, the IDs, the price, right? None of those uh, survive. They're gone. So it would be inappropriate to ask here just order price, right? Because there's three order prices. Which one would you show, right? Uh, there would be a, a, a cell here of order price. It's three. So we can only say, well, what the average, the minimum, the max, the, the sum, right? We, we can't ask about any one particular value. So this is totally fine. We can ask the summation of all order prices right, that fall in that category, in the Alice category, or the Charlie category, or the Bob category. They would be all added up and then uh, put into that, into that field. Now that field, sum order price, what, the, what, what the, um, the database will do is that it will guess at a best name for this field. If you don't tell it what name to use, It'll use the name of the operation that it used to generate this this column. Right? So it'll use the same you know, aggregation that you that you you added. Uh, this is not standard. Each vendor will do different things. Okay. Uh, you know, some some vendors will will uh, replace the parentheses with underscores. And, uh, other ones will put them all uppercase, all lowercase. It's not standard. Right? Each one will use different things. Uh, if you want to give it a specific name, you could use the as operator, right? So sum order price as, right? and then total price, say. Right? And, then, and then it'll take the name of that, of that column. Make sense? All right. uh, here's a couple more. Uh, if you use an aggregate, right? If you use an aggregate function of sum order price, right? uh, it will assume that what you meant was that the entire table was meant for uh, as, as a whole group, right? That, that, that uh, uh, you're taking the entire content of the table and you're considering that as, a, as one single classification, okay? Uh, now, because we, we didn't actually group that this is basically one single group, the values do survive, right? All the other values survive, so customers there, uh, so th those survive, we're not grouping by anything. So all the values do indeed uh, uh, are, are, are still available, uh, except that for the ones that you aggregated, right? All those values will be collected into one single uh, value, and you will get a repetition of all that value across all the records, all the resulting records. Okay? So it takes it as as one single uh, one single group.
Uh, well, you can you can also group by multiple fields, right? Not just one field. And, and uh, what it will do is that all those records where the values, right, of the of the groups of the fields that you're grouping by, where they match, right, they will all they will they will be part of the same group. Okay. Uh, and and since those values that you use for grouping, right, those will survive, and you can reference them in the in the select clause. Right, the values that you group by, right? Those those will be, those will, will those will survive. So here we're grouping by customer in order date. They survive. We can we can add them in the select clause. They don't have they don't have to be there, right? Uh, it could be one of them or both of them or none of them, right? And only have the aggregate uh, of the uh, other other fields. We can add the the sum of the order price, the average of something else, and the minimum of something else, right? So it would be the aggregate values of all the other fields. Uh, here's just a couple more uh, aggregates. You can say you can ask for the minimum, you can ask for the maximum. Uh, here's uh, just using the, uh, the 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 university database that we've seen uh, all along. Uh, we're grouping by the the uh, the students uh, major, um, uh, and so where where the students major match, it'll create one single uh, record. Uh, and then all the other fields uh, will not survive only the aggregations of those fields. Uh, so here we, we, uh, we are aggregating uh, the minimum year, the maximum year, uh, and, and we're renaming them right to use these column names instead of the default names for those fields. Uh, so there's a couple of limitations uh, uh, that uh, group by uh, introduces uh, only because of the order in which uh, it occurs, right? Uh, so, so for instance, uh, we'll, we won't be able to. Uh, the, the reason we can't use things in the where clause, or we can't use things in the select clause, uh, is just because the way uh, order happens, right? Order by, I'm sorry, a uh, group by happens before any of the select uh, can can occur, or any of the where clause can occur, right? So first, the grouping occurs for for uh, optimization purposes, right? And then we select and, and filter on the on the other things, right? Uh, so, so the group by uh, occurs after uh, the, the where clause. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Is evaluated after the where clause and before the select statement. Uh, so we can't have every aggregations uh, in the where clause. Um, right. You can only have computed fields, non-computed fields allowed in the select clause. So let's look at some examples. So let's go back to the. Uh, to, the, to the university uh, database that uh, we've been looking at uh, so far, and let's uh, let's uh, let's go back to that original question that we looked at. I think it was last uh, last week uh, of the um, the uh, the maximum number of A's, right? Um, and uh, so the the way that we we uh, solved it uh, was that we first uh, took a look at the um, uh, took a look at the, uh, the the section ID and we grouped it. We grouped it by section ID, right? And then we aggregated, uh, counting how many unique identifiers there were for the enrollment. How many were there per section? So this would be counted per section. So given a particular section, all the A's in a particular enrollment uh, record, right? Those were grouped together, counted, uh, and then you would get the number of A's in that particular section. Right? So you end up with a uh, with the result set when you have the section ID, right, and then you, you have the, the A's for that particular section. Okay. Um, and then what else do we do? We uh, we took that uh, as a um, uh, as a result, right, to then feed it into another query. Right? So this could be nested queries, right? Uh, a little later, we'll instead of using nested queries, we're going to be using views. That right? would be the uh, Basically, these these are implemented. This could definitely be implemented like views. We'll see them in a minute. Um, so 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 we're using the view Q83, which is the result of the previous query, uh, and then uh, from here we're retrieving. Uh, we're doing another aggregation. We're taking the entire the entire query result set from the previous one, taking that as one single um, collection, right? One single group. Right? And then we're just calculating the max over the entire uh, uh, subset of, uh, of grouped uh, sections, right? right? 
and then we're, and this, this, this returns with one single value, right? What is the, the, the maximum number of A's across all sections, okay? Uh, just a visual example, uh, here we have multiple records. Uh, we have um, uh, 12 records uh, across three sections, sections one, two, and three. And, uh, and when we group them, we see that those two A's would fall in section one, this, these three A's would fall in section two, and this one A would fall in section three. And when we collapse these uh, in our second query, uh, we would end up with just three resulting uh, records, right? These three over here. Right, so here's a select. That's the first query that we have, right? Count uh, the, the um, count number of A's, right, across different sections, group by section ID, group one, two, and three. Okay. And then the max three. Uh, the max three was was taken. This this entire resulted as one single big group, right? And then just counting. Uh, you know, uh, aggregating, seeing which one was the max, and we got the number three. Uh, so, so we, what we um, uh, the um, what we tried to do was uh, to know uh, which one, which section was it that had the most A's. Right? Uh, this one, this one, would be able to return to say, well, it was section two that had the three A's, right? Not section one and. and uh, in section uh, uh, section three, but section two, uh, and the way we um, uh, we apply this was that in, from the um, from that query Q eighty three, which one was Q eighty three? Q eighty three was the, uh, the 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 retrieval right of the of these over here, uh, and then we. Um, we selected the uh, the max A's, uh, max A's. Oh, and the section, right? And the section ID, the one that the section that matched, right? And it gave those section two and max A. Uh, now the thing is that you know we're breaking here one of the rules, right? Uh, since since uh, here we're grouping the entire the entire uh, uh, um, this uh, the entire set. Uh, as one single group, uh, we can only apply aggregates. Right? We can't. We, we don't have the original values of max a's. Right? That's lost. Right? So being able to being able to reference uh, a value that is gone right, after the grouping is illegal. So this would not this would not compile. Right? The uh, the um, uh, SQL would balk at this. It says no. That's not one of the That's not one of the grouping uh, fields. You only you only group it by uh, number of A's, uh, so you cannot reference none of these none of these fields. All right, so how do we do this? The, the the way we solved it was to to um, to do the to do this uh, uh, equality, right? We uh, we we made we made uh, the number of max A's that we calculated was number three. Right? Then we went back to the back to the original query that, that had the, the sections and the number of A's, right? And we made, made a match of saying, well, where, we, you know, which record has the number of A's that is equal to the maximum number of A's, right? And then it came back uh, with, the, uh, with the section, right? The, ori the original Q83 had the, name, the, the section number, so we can retrieve that. Uh, we, we would have wanted to do this, right? Oops, sorry. We, want, we would have wanted to do something like this. You know, retrieve the section ID from from the uh, from the uh, result set uh, that had the number of A's uh, and the section, right? and do something like this, where the number of A's is equal to the max of the number of A's. So we're using the aggregate in the where clause. But this is, again, this is not allowed because by the by the time by the time we get to the where clause, right, it has been grouped already. Uh, so we can't calculate the maximum of anything because we've lost. Those number of A's are gone, right? They were used uh, to, to to group the whole thing. Uh, so to deal with this conundrum, right, of being able to use these these uh, these predicates uh, in the where clause, right, uh, there's additional uh, functionality in uh, in SQL to allow these kinds of in, uh, these kinds of questions uh, that would allow you to apply aggregate functions in the uh, as if they were part of the where clause. 
And so, so instead of instead of using where, uh, we use another keyword called having. Give me those records that have this particular predicate whose true. Like where the aggregate function, which could be max, sum, average, minimum, right? Um, on, on, a, on a particular column, um, you know, it's equal to or less than or whatever uh, some some value, right? which allows you to have your predicates where clauses in. Uh, uh, to, I mean, I'm sorry, to use in the where clause allows you to use uh, aggregate functions. So let's look at a couple examples on how that uh, would work. Uh, so here's an example of, uh, uh, of orders um, uh, across multiple uh, customers, uh, their order prices, the order IDs, the order date. Uh, and uh, so what we'd like to be able to do is, is calculate uh, perhaps the, um, uh, the aggregation of all, all order prices, right? And, you know the max, the sum, the average, the minimum, right? And return to me uh, those those records that meet this particular criteria, you know, this predicate of all the sum of the order prices less than say 2,000. In this case, it just returns Nielsen, but it could have returned you know something something else, um, you, know, uh, you know, say less than or equal to 1,700. Uh, it might have returned maybe a couple other records that meet that criteria. Right? So so this is exactly what we're looking for, right? The capability of uh, of applying predicates and aggregates right, as part of the filter. Uh, here's another one, having a sum that's greater than 1,500, and we, we come back with uh, these uh, two uh, records, Boone and uh, Jensen. Uh, 